Hello, fellow Sublime Text fanatics. Odan here. Welcome back to another Sublime Text tutorial video. Now, the topics of the videos on the channel are driven by the questions that are most commonly asked by the Sublime Text community and by requests in the comment section down below. And last week, we got just such a request from somebody, which is the perfect marriage of the last two topics that we covered here on the channel. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to create a video that talks a little bit more about snippets and what you can do with them and how to supercharge them using plugins. The topic of this week's video came from a suggestion by Heinrich in the comment section of a previous video. And if you yourself have any suggestions for topics you'd like to see covered in any of the video series on the channel, drop them down in the comment section below and you like Heinrich could have your question hopefully answered satisfactorily. And that particular uh, suggestion had to do with creating a plugin to do a particular thing. But as we'll see, there's a lot of different ways that we could do this, some of which are not plugin related at all and relate to a previous topic on the channel. So even if you're not necessarily interested in learning how to create a plugin, there's still a lot of great information you can use here to make your life in Sublime, you know, more Sublime like we do. Now, Heinrich's question uh, says, let's take any particular key binding, can be whatever, let's say control P. I wouldn't use that one. That's going to open the go to anything panel, but you know, like he said, could be anything. And uh, if this key is pressed and no text is selected, then insert something like a console log or print, depending on the language that you're using. And if there was some text selected, then insert different text that actually log prints or logs what the actual selected text was. And then we want to do things like leave the cursor in a position inside of the uh, double quotes for typing and things of that nature. Now, there's a few different ways that we could pull something like this off. Some of those are plugin related and some of them are not. Sublime actually has the functionality for doing this completely uh, out of the box without you having to do anything else. We're going to cover that first and then see how we could automate that with plugins to maybe make our lives a little bit easier and go through that plugin code in just a little bit more detail. Now, there's a lot of different ways we could do this with the plugin and there's a lot of different ways that we could interpret uh, what we mean by wrapping the selected text in, in a print statement. So this is just going to be one of those. And uh, fair to say, I've never, I haven't checked. There may be a package on package uh, control that does something like this already, but that doesn't help you if you wanted to learn how to do it, right? So we're going to go ahead and dive in. All this being equal, I tend to create my own plugins instead of looking on package control if it's something uh, small like this as well. Now let's break this down because whenever you want to do anything in Sublime, whether you want to do, do it with a plugin or not, the one thing you want to do is try to think about existing functionality in Sublime and how you could leverage it to do what you're trying to do. And this is asking for injecting some pre-constructed, pre-formatted text at the press of a key and maybe altering that uh, boilerplate text uh, between one invocation and another. And that should sound familiar because just a couple of weeks ago, we talked about snippets and how you can use them. And this is 100% the ballywick of snippets. You could do something like this that way. Now, uh, as we mentioned in that video on snippets, and if you're unfamiliar with them in general, and we're going to assume that you saw that video or you understand snippets. So if any of this doesn't make a whole lot of sense in reference to snippets, if you go back and watch that video, hopefully this will make a, a little bit more sense. Uh, but I mentioned in that uh, previous video that one of the things that Sublime does uh, a lot uh, in its default key bindings for some things is use snippets in response to a single key press. This is how wrapping text in a tag works. It's how auto pairing quotes works. And it's also how auto pairing brackets works as well. And when you, or even the uh, functionality for selecting some text and pushing a, a double quote or a bracket and having it automatically wrapped, that is done by snippets and key bindings. So for more examples of what we're talking about here, you can look in the default key bindings and see those very things actually in use. We're going to go through how we might do something like that here. Now, thinking about this logically, there's two different types of text that we need to include per file type. We're going to just focus on doing this for a JavaScript in this particular case. But if we can do this for one type of file, then we could easily extrapolate the method that we're using for any type of file. So we're not going to concern ourselves with that too much here. And we'll just work on a single example. And in that single example, there's two different types of text we might like to inject inside of the buffer. We would want to inject an appropriate print statement, uh, in this case, a console.log with the, uh, the cursor left inside the quotes. And if there's select text, 
we need to insert different text because we need to somehow have the selection referenced inside of there. So to do this, we would need to create two different snippets. And we saw how to do that in the previous video, tools, developer, new snippet, and go ahead and create both of those things. Now we're going to be creating these snippets to be invoked by uh, a key press. So in that case, we don't need to use the tab uh, trigger on these because we're not intending to use them that way. And we don't need to include a scope because when you trigger a snippet via a key binding, it will... It's up to the key binding to know whether it's going to inject or not. It's not uh, up to the snippet to control that in that particular case. So we can leave that out and the optional description field out as well. You could put those in there if you want to use these snippets usually uh, as the in the usual fashion and then also trigger them via key binding if you wanted to that's entirely up to you so what we really need to focus on is the content section of the snippet so for the first one that's just a simple console.log in this particular case and uh, we would use the dollar zero variable field to specify where the cursor should go when the snippet's expanded so that it ends up inside of the double quotes and that's that snippet done and good to go now for the other one we need to be able to do something with the selected text because we want to wrap the selected text and then say what the selected text was and then go ahead and print it out. We're assuming it's a, a variable of some sort. And one of the things I touched on very briefly at the end of the snippet video but didn't go into because I didn't want it to get too long is snippets provide uh, various variables that are built in like that expand to things like uh, the file that you're currently in, the user that you are, and things of that nature that you can use inside of your snippet. You could use that to create you know, boilerplate headers with the, uh, the name of the file and your name as the author and things of that nature. One of those variables is selection, which will expand out to the text that was currently selected when the snippet was expanded. That's not something that you can use if you were using a tab trigger in a snippet because it's not possible to have selected text and then type something. As soon as you type when there's selected text, the selected text gets removed. But by a key binding or if you use the command palette, then this is entirely possible. Or a menu entry if you added it that way as well. So what we can do here is use the variable selection to expand out uh, in two different places so that we can see what the name of the variable was and then also use it as an argument to the console console log. And from there we jump into our key bindings where we're going to need to create a couple of different key bindings here because we have two different snippets that we need to inject into the system. But fortunately for us we can use the same key for both of those because one of the things we can do in our key bindings is apply context to our keys uh, that tells Sublime that they only apply in certain specific situations. And as long as we make sure that uh, all of the keys that are key bindings that are using the same key are mutually exclusive with regards to the context of those keys, then the appropriate one will always be selected and we're good to go. And if you're unfamiliar with key bindings in general or context in specific, uh, especially as it relates to doing things with scopes, there are videos for all of those things that I've linked down in the description below the video. So we're not going to go into that here. So we would create a couple of bindings here. I just use the sample key binding that the snippet in package dev uh, uses to make life a little bit easier. And the command we want to inject is the insert snippet command. This takes a couple of different arguments. The one we're going to focus on first though is the name argument. And that's going to be the name of the snippet that this thing should be injecting in the format of packages slash name of package slash the name of the snippet as it's stored inside of that particular package. And we can see that here. And we're going to need some context on our key bindings as well. Both of these need to have a context to make sure that they only apply in JavaScript because we don't want to insert a console.log into our Python code. That's unlikely to be handy. Uh, and we also have a context here to detect if this selection is currently empty or not. One of these will have that and one of them won't. And if these are ordered the correct way in the thing, uh, the key bindings file, then when you press something in the selection is empty, one of them will be chosen. Otherwise, the other one uh, will be chosen. And that's all we need to do for that. Create the two snippets, create the two key bindings. And then if we had a, a scratch buffer for JavaScript, we could uh, press the key and when there's not any selected text, the, the trip snip snippet triggers and the cursor is ready to go for us to type text inside. Or if we had some text that was selected and we pressed the key, then it would expand out with the selection just like so. And of course, 
if we wanted to continue on and do this with Python, we could do the exact same thing, create two more snippet files, create two more key bindings that bind to the two new snippets and change the selector to be Python uh, instead of JavaScript, and we are good to go. And this is a little bit unwieldy because it requires us to create these snippets, which are pretty large, unwieldy XML files, and really we don't care about the tab triggers or the scopes or the descriptions. We just care about the content, and it turns out that that other argument that the insert snippet command uh, accepts, the content uh, argument, will actually allow you to specify the content of the snippet directly. And in that case, you don't need to create a snippet file. You're just supplying it inline right in the place where the command is being executed. And this is what uh, Sublime does for a lot of its default key bindings for the auto quote pairing uh, and such, as we mentioned previously. So uh, in that case, what we would do uh, instead is just put the contents of those snippets directly inline in the file. Now remember, the uh, the snippet file is XML, so the only thing that's really special in there is dollar signs that we need to quote. Here in uh, JSON files, there's a lot more things. This The content has to be uh, a valid JSON string, so if you have things like uh, double quotes, you need to quote those as well, and you need to take special care if you're using dollar signs. I would recommend package dev for something like this because it will show you uh, extra syntax highlighting for the stuff that is going on, and, and as a result, you can uh, make sure that your thing is going to be correct. And now that we have these two new key bindings, the same uh, things will work as they did previously. We can do this uh, with no text selected and get the console.log being inserted. Or if we were to type some text and select that text and press the key, it gets wrapped exactly the same way. So we can do this 100% without any plugins whatsoever by creating snippet files or just inlining them directly using the insert snippet command. And this, that's a perfectly valid solution to this particular problem. It's also a great solution for other uh, cases, not necessarily programming related. For example, see the aforementioned wrap things with tags and, and whatnot. So this is a really great way to make your life in Sublime more Sublime, as we do. But of course, the other topic of this video is about how we could create a plugin to automate some of this. Because what we can do is create a plugin that does a lot of this boilerplate for us. Here we have to create two key bindings for every language file so that we can detect if there's selected text or not and make sure that those commands are related to the appropriate uh, syntax. And we also need to create snippet files as well. But since we can inline snippet content, that doesn't mean means we don't have to create any content uh, snippet files directly to get at that content. And our plugin is perfectly capable of detecting the type of file and taking a different text as a result of that from some other method, and also grabbing the selection or even detecting if there is any selection. So we can learn a fair bit about how this is going to work. Let's dive into that part in the next bit of the video. And when it comes to creating a plugin for something like this, there are a few different ways to do this. We're going to show a simple example and then a slightly more advanced example. And we're going to leverage snippets to do this the same way that the key bindings did. We could also do this in even more complicated ways by not using the insert snippet command at all and modifying the contents of buffer directly. But we'll save that for a future video because that's a little bit more of an involved topic. Now, our simple example here, much like the key binding, is going to rely on doing this for just a single type of file because uh, much like uh, the argument there. If you can make it work for one type of file, then you can make it work for as many types of files as you like by just extrapolating a little bit of the code that you were using behind the scenes. And that makes the initial implementation a lot easier. It allows you to focus in on exactly what you're doing uh, with more fine-grained control. And then once you have something working, then you can start augmenting onto it and making it better, faster, look nicer, etc. Nobody cares how fast or how nice your code looks if it doesn't do what you want it to do, right? We need to think about this logically, and this may require looking into the API documentation as well. If you're newer to plugins and Sublime, and you're a little bit unfamiliar with that, as as you gain more function or more familiarity rather with uh, Sublime Text, then the functionality that you need to use most commonly in plugins is something that you just sort of inherently get a sense for. So technically, this is is easy if you have the correct uh, the correct knowledge. So let's think about this logically. What is it we're trying to do, and what are we going to need to know. And we can use that to know what we need to look at in the API documentation to get a little bit more of a sense for what we're doing. The first thing to note is we want to take an action in response to a key being pressed. 
So that means we want to create a command because commands are for actions. Reactions are a completely other thing. That's eventless. We haven't even covered that in plugin 101 just yet. Um, so we want to create ourselves a command. And when we create a new plugin with the tools developer new plugin menu command, we automatically get uh, a stub command. So we're good to go on that front. We'll just go ahead and swap the name on that to be something else like, say, insert log to make sure that our command uh, does uh, what we want. We also probably want to give a little bit of thought at this point to what type of command we want to create, because as we covered in the Plugin 101 video on commands, there are three different kinds, the text command, the window command, and the application command. And which one of those should we use in this particular case? Well, one thing we want to do here is modify the contents of a buffer. Uh, that's the whole point of creating this plugin in the first place. And we know that in order to create any sort of modification to a buffer, a delete, an insert, a replace, you need to have an edit object so that Sublime can track the changes to undo them and redo them. And the only way to get an edit object is via a the edit argument of the run method of the text command class. Whew, got through all of that one. So all else being equal, anytime you're ever going to want to modify something, you need to create a text command. And as I said in the video on uh, on commands and in text commands in particular, anything that you want to do that modifies a buffer needs to be a text command. That doesn't mean that you have to write the text command per se. Something needs to be a text command, but observably the uh, insert snippet command must be a text command because it's modifying the buffer and we're just going to execute that command so it's the thing that's going to modify the buffer for us technically our command can be any of the three different types and we're going to choose to use a text command anyway because it makes the most logical sense for what we're trying to do we need to know the type of a, the file that the command is editing inside of we need to know the selection and whether it's empty or not so that we can uh, know what type of text we want to insert. And for things like that, we need access to the actual view itself to get that information. And that's inherently available to us in a text command via the self.view property or member, depending on uh, the terminology that you use for that. So we're going to use a text command here. We could do this with any of the types of uh, commands, really, but the code would be more complex. And who's got time for that? And then we need to think about Overall, what do we need to know in order to get this to work? One thing we need to know is um, how we're going to get the text in, and we're going to use the insert snippet command to do that. So we need to know how to execute some other command from inside of our command. We also need to know uh, a little bit about the selection, because we need to know if the selection is empty or not, so we know what type of text we should be telling the insert snippet command to insert. And the other thing that we need here, relatively speaking, is a way to detect the type of file that we're currently in. Because previously, the key binding was responsible for detecting whether there was selected text or not and what the type of file it was. Our goal here is to have just a single key binding that does everything for us. So we need to be able to detect the type of file so that we don't activate ourselves or allow ourselves to be activated, uh, rather, if it's not possible. And we also need to know how do we go about doing that. This is all stuff that we've actually covered already in Plugin 101. So the first thing we need to know is how do we actually run some other command? And it turns out that's uh, very simple. That is the run command method. There's a run command method in the view class, in the window class, and in the Sublime module. And you can use the view, the view uh, classes version of run command to run a text command. You can run the window classes version to run a text command or a window command. The window.run command uh, um, member will execute a window command. If it's a window command, if it's a text command, it'll find the currently focused view inside of the window and then tell that view to execute it. Um, so we're going to use the view method, uh, the view run command to be able to do something like this. And we would do something like that by saying self.view.run command with the insert snippet command. And then the second argument to this method is the arguments dict that we would provide. So we're going to say that the contents of that should be the contents variable that we're going to select and figure 
figure out what it is we want to be inside of uh, that thing. And that will do the job of putting the text in. We just need to figure out what text we actually want. And in order to do that, we need to know a little bit about the selection. Now, self.view is the view that the command is currently running inside of, and the cell uh, member uh, function inside of that class is responsible for giving you a selection object. And if you're unfamiliar with that, remember all of this stuff is covered in the API documentation and it's also covered somewhat in the terminology video that we did recently in Plugin 101. The selection class is a list of regions that represent all of the selections in the buffer. And remember, selections are all of the cursors in the buffer and maybe they have selected text associated with them and maybe they don't. For our simple example here, we're going to use self.view.cell to get the selection object and then uh, get the first selection. That's the one that will be highest up in the file. And we're going to use, that's going to return to us a region because selections are defined by regions. One of the methods on the region class is being able to ask it if it's empty or not. And if the selection is empty, then there's one set of text that we want to use. And if the selection's not empty, there's a different selection set of text that we want to use instead. So that's fairly simplistic and we're just going to use this simple uh, code here in order to pull that off and now this command when we bind it to a key will automatically trigger uh, the appropriate thing. If there's no selected text it will insert the one set of text and if there is selected text it will insert the other one. Now unfortunately for us this is actually going to uh, trigger in every type of file all throughout creation because the only thing that Sublime knows is how to run our command. So we need to be able to constrain whether or not it will run or not. And we could do that in the key binding, but uh, that is that would require us to use a context in the key binding. And while we could do that by creating our own custom context, that's a little bit more work. And we can actually do this a lot easier by going back to the plugin because one of the things we learned when we were talking about creating a command is the is enabled uh, member uh, of the command class is something that Sublime will call to ask you should your command be active right now? And to do that, we can just determine whether or not this type of file is a JavaScript file. And if it is, then we are, our command can be enabled. And if not, we don't want it to be enabled at all. And that is something that we can do by using the match selector method of the view class. Now, this particular method takes two arguments. The first is a point in the file to actually test the scope of, and the second one is the scope itself. This uh, directly maps to how the key binding context does this. And if you're unfamiliar with scopes and how scope matching works. Naturally, there's a video linked down below where you could learn a little bit more about that. Now, what were you going to use here as the point is point zero. Remember, points are offsets of characters into the file. Point zero is going to be the first character in the file, but since the top level scope, in this case source.js, is applied to every character in the whole entire file, uh, then it's easy enough for us to be able to detect that uh, right there in that particular situation. So we're going to pass a zero. No matter where where the cursor happens to be in the file, it's always going to be a JavaScript file or not. And with that in place, now the command will still work inside of JavaScript files. But if we were to jump to, say, a Python file and press the key, then absolutely nothing happens because the command has disabled itself in this case. So this is, like I said, is a very simple example of this, but it does show us how we could do something like this from inside of a plugin. Now let's kick this up just a little bit more and show how we could expand on this a little bit to work with the two types of files that Heinrich originally asked about and how you could extend this even further to other types of files as well. Our plugin command will work for a certain type of file. Let's extrapolate to how we could do this for multiple types of files. In this case, two, because uh, that's a small, simple example. But really, as we'll see, this is completely open-ended from this point forward. Now, when we look at the code that we have here, logically, what's the first thing we're doing? We're using the state of whether or not there's uh, an empty selection to select one of two different sets of strings that we want to insert into the buffer, and then we insert it. And we also enable or disable our command based on the type of file. 
To do this in multiple types of files, we need to be able to select not only two different strings depending on whether or not the selection is empty or not, but also a string that's specific to the type of file that we're editing. And we need to have a list of more than one type of file that we're actually valid inside of. And as it transpires, we already know how to get at the type of file. We're using that to enable or disable our command. So we could do something that would allow us to have some sort of configuration information that uses that type information to be able to know what text is actually supposed to be inserted. For our purposes here, we're just going to inline the configuration directly inside of the plugin itself. Of course, in a more production ready type plugin, you'd have this in a Sublime Settings file that could be modified on the fly, but you know, much like we did this originally for just a single file type and then uh, expanded out to do multiples, if your configuration works inside the file, then you can work on the next stage of complexity, which is working on the settings. Remember, if you're unfamiliar with plugin stuff in general, when you're working on them, try not to do too much too fast. Look at the problem and nibble away at it in the small controlled chunks that you can do, and then look for another small part that you can do. So we started off, how do we do this? We can do it with a key binding. Now we can do it with a command. We can do it for one type of file. We learned everything we needed to know to do that. Now we just need just a little bit more to get going. So what I'm going to create here is a top level global dictionary in our code that's going to create the mapping that we want here. Now, for our example here, where there's two different types of files, logically thinking about this, we need to use the type of the file that we're currently uh, editing in order to know uh, what exactly it is that we need to insert into the buffer. And then based on that information, we need to know which of two things we need to insert in order to do that. So we're going to make the top level keys in this file, the scopes that represent what type of file the information that we're entering is related to. And then each of those will be a list with two strings. The first one for when there's not any selected text and the second for when there is. So that's a simple source.js with the two strings that we already have, as we can see here. And also one for source.python that uses the Python equivalent of this, which is uh, using print statements instead of console.logs, but otherwise is doing the exact same thing. Now, with this configuration information up here, we're going to need this information in a couple of different places. When our command actually executes, we need to have access to some part of this configuration to be able to know what uh, strings we need to insert. And inherently, this configuration information is telling us right now the types of files that our command should be enabled inside of. Currently, there's two of them the way I've defined this right now. So this information is actually needed in a couple of different places inside of our command. So what we can do is go ahead and add a method to the command to do this. You could also do this in a top level module function if you wanted to do that. But I'm going to do this as a method in the command here to point out that although the command class does have a set of predefined methods that you use inside of it that Sublime knows to call in various situations. It's still uh, a regular class in all other regards. So any other methods you might need, uh, you can go ahead and create those if it makes your code easier to read. So we're going to say that we need a get config uh, method here that's going to return to us the information on the particular type of file that we're currently inside of. And to do that, we just need to iterate over these. Now, what we're actually going to do here is a little bit of an extension from the current version of the, uh, the plugin here. Currently, when we check to see if we're enabled or not, we just check if the file type as a whole is appropriate for the type of uh, file that we're interested in. Here, what we're actually going to do is base that on the cursor position of the first selection in the file. Remember, that will work whether there's selected text or not. That makes our command slightly better than it was before because now it will work, for example, in JavaScript that's embedded inside of an HTML document, where previously it wouldn't because in an HTML document, the 
overall scope is text.html and not source.js. So this automatically makes this even better just with a little bit of extra code. And what we're actually doing is the same thing we were doing before. We're using the cell method of the view class in order to get the current selection. We're selecting the very first one, which is going to be the first selection you see visibly from the top of the file. And we're going to access its .b method. Now we talked about regions in the terminology lesson. Regions are a set of two points, an A and a B for the start of the region and the end of the region. And remember, if they're, the region covers in this particular case, because we're talking about selections, the selected text. So if the start and the end are the same value, then you see a cursor, but you don't see any uh, text selected. But if the start starts here and the end is over here, then there is some text selected. The size of the region is non-zero. It's not empty. We, we've seen that already. The two points are A and B, and they're created in the order that they were created. So if you select from left to right, it goes A, B, and the selection is always where the cursor ends up. That's where you're going to see the cursor. That's always going to be the B point. Similarly, if you started from the right and dragged left, it started here. It ended here. This is the A point. This is the B point. The cursor in any given selection is always at point B. So we add the dot B on here to get the B point in this. And then we have basically all the information we need. We're going to iterate over the config uh, dictionary to get the top level keys and then match the selector for the current cursor position against that. And if it matches, this is the configuration list we want. So return that list back. Otherwise, we'll return none. And the first thing we can do is very easily modify our is enabled method. We don't need to use view.matchSelector anymore. We can just call get config. And if this value returns none, then we're not uh, in a file type that is available in the configuration. So our command should not be enabled right now. But if it doesn't return none, then uh, our command should be enabled. So if get config is not none, enable our command. That is fairly simple. And similarly, the code up here in the run method gets a lot easier too. What we need to do here is get at the current configuration of that for the file type that the command is currently running inside of. And we're going to go ahead and just store that in a variable. And then we determine the contents instead of from hard-coded strings like we did before. We know it's the first one if the selection is empty and the second one if it is full uh, and or sorry rather not full but not empty and then we can just insert the snippet there's other ways you could do this as well if you wanted to do something like that the uh, get config could actually infer which of those two strings it should return based on whether this selection is empty or not and then that code gets even a little bit clearer uh, for example but now with this in place this will now work inside of a javascript file the same way as it did before but it will also work inside of a Python file as well. We can see that right here. And even in this third type of file, if this was an HTML file with inline JavaScript, this will now work here as well in a place where it didn't before. So we have inline configuration into our command with only a single key binding. We can inject multiple sets of text and our code is determining what it should be injecting inside of there. We're going to go ahead and call the demonstration uh, right there because this is already getting pretty long as it is. And all else being equal, we could keep iterating on this for an extended period of time. For example, this version of the command is a lot smarter than the previous one was, but still not quite smart enough because it's using whether or not the first selection in the file is empty or not to determine what snippet should be injected. But it's possible for the file to have as many selections as you like. It should really be choosing the appropriate snippet for each one of those along the lines. Or maybe it shouldn't. Maybe we need to make sure that all of the selections are either empty or not when we enable ourselves is another thing we could do. We probably want our configuration to be a configuration file. Those are all things that we could do uh, in another video. If you'd like to see something like that or you have another suggestion for a, a plugin that we could work through in a series uh, s uh, video much like this one to get a sense for how we can go ahead and build up plugins, you can drop that down in the comment section below. You can also, while you're down there, use those buttons to thumb, subscribe, and share as you deem appropriate so you're made aware when the uh, next greatest uh, Sublime Text tutorial video becomes available on the channel. But until that next video, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have of a sublime day.